Hi folks, Marty here, and I'm glad you could be with me today for this week's painting. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at what's the best exercise to get you going as an artist. Whether you're a beginner or someone who has been painting for a while but just have run out of ideas and it's hard to get going again. Well, this little exercise is the best way I find to free you up. But we're going to use little Irish Fats cottages to do this. And the landscape is going to be straight out of your imagination. So it's a very easy wee exercise. So grab your brushes and your paper and we'll get stuck in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to draw a wee horizon line. And usually I would, when I'm doing this, I would uh, do it... Um, a third up from the bottom or a third down from the top um, but as I'm using quite a small piece of paper this is probably um, half of a, a quarter imperial um, and it's, it's probably 29 by 19 centimeters just to give you an idea what I'll do is I'll just I'll just drop it in about here and I'm gonna pop a line across for you In this painting today, um, for this sketch, I'm going to draw a little heavier than what I normally would. And that's only so that you can see what I'm doing here. But ordinarily, I would uh, use quite a light touch on the pencil. Um, just so as it doesn't dominate the, the painting process. I don't want to get into a painting by number situation. Okay, so this is going to be our, our horizon line. And in the distance, I'm going to just pop in some some loose tree or hills and fields and that kind of thing all right and and then with maybe some water here and then what we're going to do is then sketch in the little cottage all right so i'm starting with the roof and then just dropping it in like that And dropping down the dropping down the the walls here and then up into the little chimney and then this one on the far end like that and then dropping down that little wall there okay and then we'll pop in a little door here and a couple of little windows or as we like to call them in Northern Ireland, windies or windows, depending on where you come from, what part of the island. And uh, we were even known to call Northern Ireland Northern Iron. Okay, so we've got that in, and what I'm going to do is maybe put a, a little shed here. And that's a kind of, I think it could be used for maybe uh, putting in um, peat for burning on the fire. So we'll just jot that in. And it's all a bit of an angle. Um, just makes it a wee bit more quirky looking. Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a little bit of a hill here. And then up above here is where we're going to have some of our trees. And what this does, it helps to frame the house. And maybe put a little bush around here as well, like that. And then what we're going to do is over here, we're going to have another wee house just in the distance here. And a lot of these wee houses would have clumped together. And uh, I suppose what we have come to recognise as little towns and so on. So this could be, this could be wee Maisie who lives down the road. Who keeps chickens. And this chap up here, um, he would maybe trade with her. 
trade milk if he keeps a, a cow at the back or something. Okay, and then we're just going to frame that little house as well. So I'm just kind of making this up as I go here. The way you do. And then we'll just keep this, we'll keep this nice and simple, this area here. We'll maybe have like a little, a little path that kind of comes out of here. Like that. And then I'll have a couple of little bushes knocking around here. Okay, I think that'll work for us there. And then outside the front of this little cottage we'll have a couple of little flower pots and so on. Okay, and then just sticking a few wee bits and bobs here. And then what we could do is just put in a couple of uh, trees down in this corner. It also helps to frame the painting. Okay, that's all we need for now. Just a simple sketch. So feel free just to screen grab that and uh, if you can print that out and trace it onto uh, a bit of watercolour paper. And uh, don't forget to follow my other little video on how to trace. Um, if you follow how to do that, this is how I would do that um, and go about that. Make it a lot easier for you. So what I'm going to do now is now that we've got our guidelines in, I'm going to take those out. And I'm just using an eraser here. I'm just gently massaging the paper. Don't do this too hard or you'll take the surface off the paper and uh, it'll be harder to paint over. I'll give you some issues there. And then pull that back a bit. And that's one of the reasons why I use a soft pencil to begin with. Um, I use an, anything from a number 2B or 4B because the lead tends to be a little bit softer and um, it means you can rub it out. Not entirely, you still, you still want to keep a, a, a little bit of the pencil drawing. It adds a bit of character to your painting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to do uh, the sky first. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing up, I'm mixing up some ultramarine blue, and then starting at the top of the sky. So this is uh, this is a wet on dry sky. And then as we bring it down, we add a bit of water to that mix. And what this does, it creates a sense of uh, distance. You can bring it right down to that horizon line if you like. And what you can do is you can go into your water with your brush. That'll be handier. And then just soften up some of those hard edges there. You can also use a tissue to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften that up like that. Keep the tops of those clouds nice and soft. And what I'm doing now is I'm just adding a bit of warmth to those clouds. So I'm adding a wee bit of um, yellow ochre here. Just drop that in there. And then 
one in the distance there. And then I'm going to mix up a bit of a, a bit of a grey colour. And to do that, you can just mix your three primaries together, your yellow, red, and your blue. And it will give you a nice um, shadow colour. If you want to warm up those clouds a bit, you could you put a wee bit of uh, light red in there. Just hit the tops of it like that. So what I'm going to do is just going to use my damp brush. I've just taken most of the water off and I'm using a wee tissue and I'm just going to just mop that up a little bit there. Bring it on down to that line. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix up some of that yellow ochre and I'm just going to just going to bring it on down into my painting here and it's going to act as a bit of a, an undercoat for what's going to go over the top. So yellow ochre and then a stronger mix of yellow ochre as you're kind of moving down towards the bottom and I'm putting in a wee bit of burnt sienna there. So this is just an undercoat. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just, before that dries completely on me, I'm just going to go in and just mop up anything that's just pooling. So there's no wet beads there that are going to run in and create cauliflowers. And what I might do is, see the front of that there? little cottage, I might put a wee bit of a colour across the front of that. Because even though these were all whitewashed, if the sun's kind of hitting it, it um, means that there will be a little bit of that. Okay, and what I'm going to do now, see the top of those clouds, I'm going to get a wee bit of tissue. I'm just going to touch the top of those a wee bit. I'm going to mix up some more, some more of my shadow colour there. Maybe a slightly stronger mix this time. Remember th the three primaries mixed together give you a grey and the colour that you want it to be the, the kind of grey that you want if you want it to be a, a warmer grey make sure you put that colour uh, more dominant in the ratio So 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my hair dryer and uh, it'll just speed this up a bit. Remember when you're using a hair dryer, um, keep it away from your water obviously, but um, start drying in the middle. Of the, if you've done a big wash like this, try to dry in the middle working your way out. Uh, think of it like a drum, uh, a drum skin and um, uh, it, it pulls, pulls it in from the edges into the middle. Try and get a hair dryer that has a cool or cool setting as well. Um, because if you are drying off your painting just to speed it up, um, what you're doing is making the paper really hot. Um, the problem that will give you is when you start painting over the top of that, your, uh, your water color will start to dry unevenly. Um, so after you've dried it, um, put it to the cool setting and give it a cool shot and that will bring the, the temperature of the paper right down to normal again. And uh, here's another thing, um, if you're painting outside or painting in um, a country that's quite hot, obviously uh, use cooler water. That'll slow down the drying process for you and uh, give you a wee bit more control. And the opposite is true as well. Um, if you're painting in really cold conditions, uh, make sure the water is not too cold. Um, put a wee bit of warm in it, warm water in it if you can. That'll also, these are wee things that you'll pick up as you go along that um, when you're running the issues and you're looking for ways to improve upon uh, your painting. So that's that, I'm happy enough for that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm kinda working my way down the painting um, and this first, this first um, layer is basically the foundation, the under layer, if you like. And then what we'll do is we'll go back and then we'll start to, I like to work from the distance and work my way forward. Um, but always remember when you're working on distant hills or fields, everything appears cooler. Um, if not, not a bit or on the bluer, grayer side of things, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up a distant color, um, something that looks kind of bluish. So I'm going to do my blue palette, or the, the blue paint in my palette. And then I'm adding a wee bit of alizarin crimson to that. But you want this to be almost like a, a, a soft um, grey, purpley, blue colour. And I'm going to switch brushes at this stage. And I'm just going to test that out. It still looks a wee bit on the weak side, so I'm just going to I'm just going to put a wee bit more blue into that. Seems to be getting there now. And then just run that along your horizon line there. Try and keep it as straight as you can. Okay, so there's going to be trees around the back of this cottage, so I'm not going to be too precious about that. And what you can do is you can just throw a wee bit, bit of a stronger colour in here and there. And what that does, it creates this impression that uh, there's uh, light hitting various parts of those hills or fields or whatever. And what I'm going to do now is just get my tissue. I'm just going to, what I'm doing is I'm imagining, this, I'm imagining the sun's coming from here. So I'm going to just give it a wee flick like that. That's another thing that's good to do. Um, start of your painting. Establish where the sun is going to be shining. So you can put a little character like this here and you can imagine the rays, sun rays coming this way here. 
So light is going to be on this side, shadow is going to be on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit there like that. And then I'm going to soften, see this bit here where the trees are going to come, I'm just going to soften that a little bit there. I don't want, um, I don't want hard lines burning through the trees, so it's trying to keep it all soft. And I'm going to dry that off now. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, turn my attention maybe to the cottage. I'm trying to keep a balance, you know, rather than going straight into the water here. Um, I would like to see how um, the cottages and the fields look in relation to the sky part. Um, and then drop this in to try and create a bit of a bridge and balance between the two of them. Okay, so I'm still seeing a wee bit of uh, line there that I've popped in there. Right, so I'm going to take that out nice and gentle. don't want to rub that paper too much. And we'll come in later on with the eraser and just tidy up some things. But for now what we're going to do is we're going to... I think we'll go ahead and um, just work on these little cottages here. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. It's a little bit more detailed. And I'm going to mix up some of that raw sienna or yellow ochre. Um, I use both colours. And it's just a case of using the one that kind of does the job for you. Okay, so just drop that in like that, and then obviously this is the back of the cottage. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a wee bit down in wee Maisie's house here. And the reason why I'm calling her Maisie because we actually knew someone who lived in a cottage called Maisie. Great name. Anyway, there you go. So, you've got that initial, that's your undercolour. So what you do now is you put a wee bit of something darker into that. Um, if you put a little bit of uh, blue into that yellow ochre or raw sienna, depending on which one you're using. Um, sometimes your pot will come with um, raw sienna, sometimes it'll come with yellow ochre. And uh, they're close enough to each other, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, be rushing out and uh, ban the the other color. What I'm doing is I'm just dropping this in round the bottom of the thatched roof here. And that helps to show a bit of curvature in the uh, the roof there. It's a bit more of a three-dimensional. And let me drop down here. And then what we're going to do is we can dry off our brush so it's just damp. You don't want any water on it. And what you can do is you can just pull little bits off here and there. And that just helps to create a little bit of uh, variety in that. I'll do the same here as well. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. Unless, of course, we go in a wee bit darker, even more. And basically all you're doing is add one of your browns. If you've got... Um, burnt umber or anything like that. You can add that to that little mixture. Oh, 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to dry that off. Okay, so what we're going to do now, um, we're going to drop a bit of shadow in. We're going to start to build up these walls here, okay? So, my shadow color, don't forget, it's the your three primaries. And you can use cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, and uh, yellow ochre. And if you mix those together, it's your three primaries. They'll neutralize each other and give you a gray color. A gray blue, if you add a wee bit more of the cobalt blue into it. And I'll just put some down here as well. And then a little bit over on the other chimney. Okay, that's starting to come together. So what's our shadow colour? If something's in shadow, it's usually cooler. Usually. And I'll pop a wee bit under here. And then I'm imagining the, the sun is high in the sky up here and this bit is jutting out so you'll probably uh, catch a little bit of the shadow here also. Um, this um, side of the house, it'll probably be in shadow as well because it's, it's back is to the sun. So what I might just do is actually fill that in as well. Okay, that looks alright. And just use your damp dry brush just to lift off any pooling that's happening. And same again, just dry that off. That's a nice shadow colour there. Alright. So what we can do now is we can uh, turn our attention um, to um, either the fields here and then we can come back later and then just add a bit more detail to these little cottages here. Um, so, we've got to think about what time of year it is. Um, if it's in the summer, uh, the trees might look a bit a bit brighter, obviously a bit fuller. Uh, so it's a case of mixing up um, a colour that uh, will be suitable. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I don't normally use uh, pre-made greens. Um, I tend to find they look a bit toxic looking uh, unless you neutralize them by um, adding in some of your warm tones. Um, I prefer just to make them from scratch so how I do that is um, just go the if you have a cad yellow if you don't don't worry about it just use um, just use your um, yellow ochre or raw sienna and then you can put a wee drop of cobalt blue or uh, ultramarine blue into that. And this is where it's good to have a little scrap paper handy which I'm just going to bring up on the screen now just to show you. See if you pop that beside there and then you just kind of you can see what you're actually doing. Okay so I think that might work. So it's remembering again where the sun is coming from. drop a wee bit of that down there. I'm going to add a wee bit more blue into that. Um, obviously if the trees are in the distance they're going to appear a bit more bluey looking. A wee bit of 
about around here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go deeper still. I'm going to put a bit more blue into that mix. It's going to look uh, quite dark and it'll always appear darker than what you think you'll need. But uh, it kind of mixes in with the other colour you've just put on there nicely. And there you go. It just helps to frame that little cottage. And don't worry about there's wee bits you've missed and stuff at all. It all adds to it. And then I'll pop some down here. Remembering where the sun's coming from again. And then I'm just going to use this to shape that hill there. So you don't have to worry about your pencil and your uh, your mark making being completely accurate as you can fix it. At the end of the day it's it's a watercolour painting not a not a pencil sketch as such. And I might just drop a wee bit of dark in here. Okay, so that's that's too dark down there. Of course, it depends what kind of trees it is. Uh, you can just use your damp brush. When I say damp, you've just it's the one you've been using. But what you've uh, what you've just done is t um, dried it off, taking some of the the wet stuff off there, and you can use it just to lift out. I think that'll do the job there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring some more of that tree colour just around the front here. And remember, you're not painting trees, you're painting blobs. And the eye will think that they're trees, it'll work it out. So what about something maybe different here? What about more of a brown colour? Um, so I'll go into my burnt sienna. Just like like to get a bit of a mixture of colour into my and then my trees just to try to break it up a bit so it doesn't all look a bit semi, you know. Okay, I think what we'll do now is we'll mix up um, some paint for this. We'll start on this side here. Um, but before we do that, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll colour in this path. And what we're going to use is light red and yellow ochre. I've added a wee bit of blue into that, just to, just to create a wee bit of variation in that. And then don't forget if there's any pulling going on, just use your, your brush with no water in it, just dry it off with your tissue, just to prevent anything running back running on you and then back into the hairdryer. Okay so that's that um, dried off there. So what we're going to do is we want to turn our attention to these fields okay and 
we're going to mix up a nice light green color. So what we're going to do is we're going to start up here and we're going to just touch up to the edges there. Bring it down. And just, you know, don't be afraid just to miss bits and so on. Bring it down just to the to the road here. And then we can do the other side nice and quickly. And I tend to find it easier to work with the the contours of the the hills and what I'm trying to show here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna go into a bit more blue. As it's coming towards you, it's getting a bit more getting a bit more um, vibrant. So I'm just dragging the brush like that. And don't overwork this, don't be getting in and out of it or it'll start to become muddy on you. And then I'm over this side now and then I'm just bringing a wee bit in. Just, I'm hitting the paint that's just went on before it and allowing it just to kind of mix. And then I'm going to drop a wee bit in here like that. Okay, so that's that. Just nice and simple. Um, just let that mix and bleed there for a second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix up a slightly stronger colour here. Um, so again, you're you're creating your greens, so your yellow and your your blue there. And if you need to put a wee bit of brown into it, just to give it the, the, the darkness and the depth you need. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some wee, some wee bits and bobs like this here. Basically, it's just to give the impression that um, there's little shrubs and stuff, you know. Don't overdo it again. Just keep it simple. Okay, not too much, just wee bits and pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my attention to some of these, some of these trees here. Okay, and again, you want to try and get your, your mix right with these. You don't want them to be too dark and draw too much attention away from the colleges, so I'm gonna just gonna drop it in like that. You're doing these kind of like cauliflowers or something or cabbages almost. Try not to make them too detailed. Okay, and what you could do, do you remember that colour from earlier on, that the alizarin crimson, the cobalt blue and the yellow ochre? What you can do is you can just get yourself a good strong mix of that. And then we're going to use that as a shadow colour. And just remembering where the sun so the light on the tops and the shadow behind here you can drop that on like that and we can also go along the path like this here or 
Remember, it's all a wee bit of hit and miss. And what we're going to do up here now is we can... Let me drop a bit of shadow across there, here. And then maybe a wee bit up here. What I love about this colour here is its translucency. Which means you can still see the colour underneath it. Maybe a couple of wee bits here and there. There you go, it's starting to come together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna drop maybe drop a tree down here. So basically you go back into your green colours again. Grab one of your blues, put a bit of yellow ochre into it. And you need to darken up, put a bit of brown into it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to the side of the brush, like this here. Maybe we put a splatter there. And if the splattering goes too far, just get your wee bit of kitchen paper or tissue and give it a wee dab there. So don't overwork it, you know, just get it on there, be bold and expressive with your with your mark making and your strokes there. Alright. And what I'm gonna do now is just dry that off. Okay, so we're getting there. We're having too much more to go. Um, what we're going to do is just put a wee bit of detail in here. Um, I think we'll kind of do a little, um, a little red door. There seemed to be a lot of these wee cottages. That was all the, the paint they had was either it was like a um, green or red. So you don't want this to you don't want this to look too um a luminous red. You want it to be like a classical kind of muted colour. So obviously you're not gonna have something like that in your palette, but what you could do is you could add a wee bit of um cobalt blue into it or something just to tone it down a wee bit. And this is a wee halfway door. It's probably used to keep the chickens in and the, the mice out. And I'll dry that off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to mix up a, a strong colour just to tackle these windows and the open door here. Um, so you might want to jump onto a smaller brush. So what I try and do is mix up uh, my strongest colours. You can use uh, ultramarine blue and a burnt umber uh, or alizarin crimson um, and just make a strong mix up. A 
I'll do this little house down here as well. If it looks too strong, just use your wee tissue and just, just dab it out again. Okay, so it's starting to come together rightly. Um, so what we need to do now is uh, turn our attention to this here. Um, and depending on what kind of a body of water it is, if it's sea or lock or whatever, um, that could dictate the kind of colours that you're going to need here. I, again, I would keep it nice and loose. So I'm going to make up maybe a turquoisey colour. And then I'm just going to very quickly just drag this across like this here. And then this could be a bit of a sandy beach there. Um, so I'm going into um, yellow ochre and a bit of burnt umber. I'm going to just drag that round the beach here. Keep it loose and light. Okay. And then I will dry that off. And what I'll do is I'll go into that bluey colour again and I'll just create a couple of wee bits and pieces like this here. And if it's too strong, just use your tissue just to gently sweep it off like that. And you don't want to overdo that. Okay, I think we're nearly there. There's not a lot more to do here. Just a wee bit of detailing work. Um, so you can do this with a pencil, pen or a brush, but um, if you wanted to, I'm using uh, this little uh, fountain pen here and then all I'm going to do is just draw in little bits, make it look like there's a, maybe a, a bicycle sitting outside there. Don't be too detailed about this. Um, I don't really want to turn in the uh, pen and wash um, sketch here. So, but um, you can do that with a brush, obviously. Um, but I'm just doing it with the fountain pen just because it's easier and quicker for me. Okay, so at this stage, what I'm going to do is um, uh, some of this pencil work. Do you remember what we were saying earlier on about taking it back a bit? So just massage the paper. where the pencil mark is and you'll find this will really start to just to clean up your image and I'm talking about the painting not how you look so it just really helps to bring that all together so there they're great just to help you paint as a guide, but and I don't mind a bit of pencil work left here and there, but it certainly looks a lot better and cleaner when you get rid of it. And that's also one of the reasons why I use a um, a soft leaded pencil because it's easier to rub out. Um, and the other thing is. Um, the water itself actually helps to dissolve the pencil. So you, there you go. So what I'm just going to do now is just clean that off here. Have a wee look at what we've what we've got. 
and the tricky bit is always trying to uh, show what's on your paper as opposed to what's on video. Um, it always looks a bit better in real life. So I think the only thing that's needed now is a few little birds. So I'm going to jump onto my little birdie brush. And I'm mixing up a dark colour and I'm just going to pop these in like this here. And there's a wee straggler over here trying to catch up. Okay, I think that'll probably do us. Um, just a case of um, popping your signature on. And I don't want my signature to stand out too much, so I'm going to maybe just pop it on here. And I'll dry that off now. And then all that's left is to take the tape off. my little sketchy doodle and uh, they're the kind of things that you could do sitting in the car um, and they're quite enjoyable and it doesn't have to be perfect after all it's just an enjoyable sketch or a water doodle okay folks thanks uh, for being with me this week just a big thanks for all those who have liked subscribed and hit the bell notification button for future updates and also a big thanks to those who are supporting the channel by doing all of the above and also going the extra mile, leaving a super thanks and even a tip. All very appreciated. So folks, until next time, have a wee go at that and be good to know how you get on with it. Marty out. <laughs>